in Ardoribus Estatis. Galileo was ordered to recite prayers of penitence each week. Although ailing, Maria Celeste undertook to relieve him of this burden. I obtained permission to view your sentence, sire, by taking upon myself the obligation you have to recite each week the seven psalms. I have already begun to fulfill this requirement. Had I been able to substitute myself in your punishment, I would accept a prison even stricter than this one in which I dwell, if by doing so, I could set you again at liberty. Although her letters had not dwelled on it, Maria Celeste's physical condition had deteriorated in her father's year-long absence. I think that during Galileo's trial and detention after the trial, he was too broken and too needy to realize the state she'd been reduced to. I am not very well, but by now I am so accustomed to poor health that I hardly think about it. As it pleases the Lord to keep testing me with some little pain or other, I thank him, and I pray that he grant you, sire, the greatest possible well-being. At the end of March, news came that Maria Celeste was gravely ill with fever. For the next 10 days, Galileo made the short walk to the convent, trying to hold on to her. But late one night, she succumbed to dysentery, leaving the world at the age of 33. When Maria Celeste died, it was as if a light had gone out in Galileo's life. It was only when he got home, as he reports later in letters to colleagues, that he, he found her so weakened that she actually succumbed to a, a fairly common illness that need not have been fatal, but in her state, proved to be fatal. Oh, I'm full of melancholy and sadness. I'm hateful to myself. And I continually hear my beloved daughter calling out to me. Maria Celeste suffered ill health during my absence. And, and she didn't look after herself. Go on, goodbye. She was a woman of exquisite mind. Singular goodness. most tender in her feelings towards me. Dozens of Galileo's personal letters have survived, 
but not one of the letters he wrote to his daughter has ever been found. Today, we have only her side of their communication. It's a shame, it's really a shame, we don't have his letters to her. It's clear from her letters that she loves this man, and she cares about him, and she knows what it is to love another person. And we can only hope that this love was inspired by a similar affection on his side. We'll never know. Surely he answered her letters. There's no question about that, because all through hers runs a thread of, you asked me this, you told me that. So one can almost reconstruct what he said, but you can't hear how it sounded. What's tantalizing here is that it's also obvious that she saved all the letters because she says that repeatedly. I keep them all, I reread them whenever I can because this brings me great joy. So where are they? The most logical explanation is that when she died, the mother abbess would have burned them, buried them, done something because Galileo's trial was such a recent memory. Fighting advancing blindness and often confined to his bed, Galileo began to re-examine his own early work. I find how much old age lessens the vividness and speed of my thinking. I now have to struggle quite hard to understand things which, when I was younger, I discovered and proved. Forced to avoid astronomy, Galileo looked back to a time before his telescope, to his brilliant but never published research on the physics of motion. You get this extraordinary situation that he'd made these really great discoveries in the study of motion right back in about 1604, something like that. And he'd written it up in a Latin text back then. But it, it's, it, it's so many other th exciting things happened to Galileo, he never seems to have got around to publishing it. So it was, in a way, a blessing that he was put in house arrest. He finally made him get around to writing these results up. <laughs> 